Championship Sprint Car Racing from J.C. Agajanian's Ascot Raceway in Gardena, California. One of the most famous race tracks in America is the Dirt Half Mile Oval, located in Gardena, California, known as Ascot Raceway. And we're set to kick off tonight's sprint car racing with the four-car, three-lap trophy days. These are the four fastest qualifiers from this afternoon's session. On the pole is Bart Nofsinger, Eddie Worth on the outside of the first row, Jimmy Oski inside second row alongside of him, Gary Howard, and it's Eddie Worth powering his way into the first turn with the lead. But look at Jimmy Oski moving all the way up to second place and setting out in pursuit of Eddie Worth. Oski in the bright blue car is a five-time California Racing Association driver. What you're watching is something known as backing it in, and it's uh, unique to Ascot. You come down the straightaway in a straight line, you throw the car sideways, slide through the turn, and then shoot down that back straightaway. Hopefully you're straight at over 100 miles an hour. Jimmy Oski trying to move on Eddie Worth as they come into turn number four. Look at Oski, the left front wheel dangling off the dirt, but it is still Eddie Worth with one lap to go. Here they go in turns one and two. Oski again down to the inside. Worth on the outside trying to hold him off. Eddie Worth, look at him, almost lost control as he shut off Jimmy Oski. But this is the last chance for Oski. Can he pull it out? He moves ahead at this point. He is holding on to a slight lead. Jimmy Oski by just a wheel length beats Eddie Worth for the Trophy Days title here at Ascot Raceway. Jimmy Oski bringing his car to a slowing stop, receives the accolades of the crowd as he wins the trophy dash to kick off tonight's action on Rolling Thunder. Hello everybody, I'm Dave McClelland and welcome to the legendary Ascot Park Raceway near Gardena, California. When you talk about racing legends, let's name some. A.J. Foyt, Barnelli Jones, Billy Vukovic, they've all driven the ultimate dirt track race car, the Sprint Car. Tonight we'll see a full program of action starting off with the heat races. The reason for tonight's four heat races is to qualify the finalists for the big main event. The top four finishers will automatically move into the main event. The second four finishers, numbers five, six, seven, and eight, will go to the semi-main. That's their last chance to make it. Bringing them around on the pole is Mike Sweeney. Outside of him, Billy Van Meter, Walt Kennedy on the inside of the second row. Bobby Jones outside of him. Gary Howard inside third row with Clark Templeman alongside a very famous name. He's the son of Shorty Templeman, a former Indy driver. And bringing up the rear is Sonny Nutter in the inverted start. It is Billy Van Meter jumping off to the lead. Bobby Jones coming around turns one and two. On the outside, he's picking up the lead. Then on the inside of him, Gary Howard, and coming around them is Walt Kennedy. Walt Kennedy moves into the third spot as Billy Van Meter holds on to first with Bobby Jones in hot pursuit. Jones, formerly of Danville, Illinois, now lives in Anaheim, California. This is his second year on the California Racing Association circuit, but he's quite a veteran. He won 11 USAC events in 1979. Back in 1977, Jones qualified for the Indy 500, started on the last row, worked his way up to 10th before his car broke. Earlier today, we asked him, what's it like to drive at Ascot? Ascot's different. It's, it's different than any racetrack in the world, I guess. You just gotta, you gotta get the car working here. It's, the car working here is more critical than anywhere in the world. Why, I don't know. I think it's just the shape of the racetrack. Like, Every racetrack's got a pattern, and you got to find that pattern. Well, you can find a pattern here and still be out to lunch, you know, because the car's got to do almost all of it. We've got two drivers that have found the pattern thus far. Billy Van Meter of Phoenix, Arizona, holding a big lead over Bubby Jones, and Bubby's car seems to be working fine, but he can't pick up much on Billy Van Meter. Van Meter, one of the younger drivers here, has yet to win a race at Ascot. Doesn't matter whether it's a main event, a semi-main, or a heat race. He's never seen the victory circle yet. Billy Van Meter holding about a two-car length lead over Bubby Jones as they go into turn numbers three and four. 
Sliding through the groove and off to the outside goes Walt Kennedy, dipping down below. Gary Howard picks up third spot. So we've had a change as Gary Howard moves into the number three position. Bobby Jones still trying to catch Billy Van Meter, and he's finding it tough to do. He runs up close to him, and he's making a move at this point. Let's see, can he drop down inside of him as the powerful 600 horsepower sprint car of Van Meter pulls the left front wheel off the ground. He shuts the door once again on Bobby Jones. Bobby tries as hard as he can, cannot seem to make up any distance at all on Billy Van Meter, who just drives away with ease as he's now moved back out to that very comfortable two-car lead. There is one lap to go, and this, the first heat race of the evening here at Ascot Park, and it is Billy Van Meter holding the lead over Bobby Jones. Gary Howard is in the number three spot. Coming down with now just a half a lap, Billy Van Meter may well be on the way to his first ever Ascot win. Look at him drive that car, headed for the checkered flag from Phoenix, Arizona, Billy Van Meter. We'll be back with more sprint car racing from Ascot Raceway in just a moment. Action at the start of the second heat race of the evening. Bob Gibson brings him around. Buster Bernard takes the green flag, moves into the lead, and Dean Thompson, starting on the outside of the second row, is making his way to the front. The master of Ascot is proving his driving style once again. Alongside of him is Buster Bernard. But once they throw those cars into the slide, look how the position changes. Dean Thompson moving out to a big, big lead as Buster Bernard in second trying to move up on Dean Thompson, but not having a bit of luck at all. Right behind him is Rip Williams. The battle going on for second and third as Dean Thompson's got a lock thus far in this second heat race of the evening over this half-mile racing service. These cars averaging approximately 90 miles an hour Racing around this service with four turns, very tight at the end of those short straightaways. Dean Thompson having won 18 victories during the 1980s season. 16 of them came right here at Ascot Raceway. So if you think anybody has a lock on the winning at Ascot, it's Dean Thompson. Buster Bernard, also one of the best known racers in Southern California, trying to catch up on the Dean Thompson. But you can see the spacing between the first and second cars and then the rest of the field as Dean Thompson of Carson, California slides around. We asked him his feelings about driving. Uh, I think this is probably the most funnest sport that there is in the world. Uh, A.J. Floyd to tell you that, Parnelli Jones, any of them that's ever driven a sprint car, it's, uh, it's a tremendous feeling. The car's got a tremendous amount of power. You're running on a fairly short racetrack and timing the rhythm. Uh, you, everything is, is all so tied together that uh, when you when you win, you know, you've really mastered something, I think. Nobody's mastered it better than the defending CRA champion, Dean Thompson, winning this heat race. The third heat race of the evening with Jerry Hudson bringing him around on the pole. Mike Rutherford outside first row, Mike Spencer inside, Leonard Lee outside of the second row. It's Hudson in the number one spot. Right behind him is Rutherford. Leonard Lee moves into the number three position. Jerry Hudson, Mike Rutherford battling for first and second. Leonard Lee trying to hold on to third spot and look at him. He drops down to the inside. Coming up to fast is Tony Simon along with him from the back of the pack is Jimmy Oski. But right now it is Jerry Hudson holding the big lead over Tony Simon who's now moved into the number two spot. Jerry Hudson starting on the pole, holding now the number one spot with Tony Simon right behind him. Earlier today, we asked Jimmy Oski, how do you drive? Try as hard as anybody else. But, uh, just when I when I think about it too much, I get nervous, so I just don't even think about it. I just wait until it happens and go out and do it. What about Jimmy Oski? How's he working this year? Oh, uh, he feels good. Uh, every year I race, I feel like I got more experience, <laughs> so I always feel better. The bright blue car of Jimmy Oski moving from the back of the back, trying to pass Mike Rutherford to move into the third spot. Holding down number one is Jerry Hudson. In the number two spot is Tony Simon, and here comes number three. That is Jimmy Oski. And Jerry Hudson's had to pull out of the race. 
Tony Simon is now in the lead, and right behind him is Jimmy Oski. Can Oski come from behind like he did in the trophy dash? We've got one lap to go. The white flag is out at Ascot, and they're flying on his half mile as Jimmy Oski's got the hammer down, headed in hot pursuit of Tony Simon. Simon, the KG veteran, is not about ready to let him pass, though, as here we come down for the checkered flag out of turn number four, and it is Tony Simon, the winner. It looks so deceptively simple just going around in a circle. The cars themselves, they look simple, but they are highly refined, complex pieces of racing equipment. A handful of steel tubing, a dash of ingenuity and genius mixed well with some exotic space age materials, blended with a potent racing engine, and you have today's modern sprint car. Using the all-aluminum racing engine equipped with a fuel injection unit, Bubby Jones Sprinter is capable of more than 600 horsepower. The padded steering wheel is completely removable to aid Bubby in getting in and out of the seat designed to fit the contours of Jones' body. Necessary safety equipment includes the full seat belt harness utilized by every driver. Running on a blend of methanol fuel, the safety fuel cell is housed in the rear portion of the body. Not much in the way of monitoring gauges, the driver controls the tunable fuel injector from the cockpit. At speeds approaching 90 miles an hour average around a half mile dirt track, it takes a lot of suspension science to keep the wheels on the ground. Today's modern sprint cars use a torsion bar system, one for each wheel. The quick change rear axle allows crew chief Ray Sheets to make the gear changes instantly, sometimes running different ratios for qualifying, heat races, and the main event. One of the mystiques in sprint car racing is the grooving of the tires. Each crew chief jealously guards his own design, hoping it will give his car and driver that slight advantage. The car's weight distribution is changed by altering the suspension load. This preloading is checked by weighing each wheel separately. The final touch, the addition of the fiberglass body, encompassing a hood and scoop and the windscreen to help block the dirt from reaching the driver. The final heat race of the evening, Mike Nish on the pole, John Redican outside of the front row, Larry Clark on the inside of the second row, and Paul Sylvester outside row number two, and the pole sitter, Mike Nash moving high on the outside, and let's Larry Clark by, and here comes young Dwayne Paduska. A nice move coming out of turn number two, putting Paduska in the number three spot. Number two, Larry Clark, and ahead of them all is John Reddigan. Reddigan, an old campaigner out of Cypress, California, won the 100 lap salute to Indy way back in 1977 here at Ascot Raceway. Larry Clark and Dwayne Paduska still battling for second place while behind them, Mike Nish is trying to hold on to fourth. Nish part of a father and son driving combination. In fact, Nish lost last season's Utah State Driving Championship to his father in the very last race of the season up at Salt Lake City. John Redigan in the number one spot here in the final heat race of the evening. The top four finishers, don't forget, will advance to the big main event here on Rolling Thunder. In the number two spot is Larry Clark. Number three is Dwayne Fiduska. Fiduska, at the age of 20, one of the youngest drivers in all of sprint car racing, we asked him how he got his start. I drove quarter midgets, started them when I was nine years old till I was 16, and I drove TQs from 16 to 18. And now in the full-fledged sprint cars, what comes after the sprint cars? Whatever chance I get. <laughs> If Paduska continues his driving style, he's going to get a lot of chances in the future. He finished second in the mystery feature at Knoxville, Iowa, back in 1980, ahead of such stars as Steve Kinzer, the World of Outlaws champion. Now Larry Clark has taken over the lead. John Redican, number two, and Dwayne Paduska still number three. One lap to go in this heat race event with Larry Clark out of Tolleson, Arizona. Stretching his lead over John Redican. Dwayne Paduska unable to move into the number two spot, but he has cinched himself a starting position in the main event. Coming down out of turn number four for the checkered flag, Larry Clark is the winner. We'll be back with more sprint car action in just a moment. We're back at J.C. Agajanian's famous Ascot Raceway in Gardena, California, as this is the semi-main event, the last chance for these drivers to make the feature. On the pole, Brad Knopfsinger, but passing him right away is Mike Sweeney. Leonard Lee moves into the number three spot, 
And Mike Spencer riding in the number four position. Mike Sweeney from Carson, just 23 years old, holding on to the lead as Leonard Lee and Brad Nosslinger battling it out for the second spot. As you can see by the groove on the racetrack, it's getting wider as the evening wears on. One of the great things about Ascot Park at nighttime racing is the fact that you've got two lanes of racing service. The track does not dry out from its early afternoon watering, and there's good traction all the way across that shiny part of the racing service. You can see Leonard Lee battling with Brad Nofslinger, trying to take over second position. Mike Spencer right behind them, and Walt Kennedy has now moved into the number five position. Walt Kennedy's car, the white number four, sponsored by Lieutenant Governor Mike Kerb. Lieutenant Governor of the state of California. And Leonard Lee, try as he might, cannot get around Brad Nofslinger. Nofslinger, the rookie of the year back in 1979. He won his first CRA race in 1980. Would like to win another one here. One lap to go, Mike Sweeney, and Leonard Lee has gotten around Brad Nofslinger coming out of turn number four on the final lap. So it is Mike Sweeney number one, Leonard Lee in the second spot. Sweeney with an easy drive at the age of 23. Bringing it down into turn number three. He has no problems at all as he heads it out down that main straightaway to take the checkered flag in the semi-main event. But it's a yellow flag. There's been a spin out on the course and Lonnie Perry spins his car out and comes to a halt. On the restart, everybody bunches up. Mike Sweeney in the first spot. Leonard Lee second. Walt Kennedy number three. Going into turn number one on the last lap as the green and white flag come out together. Look at Walt Kennedy move inside. Leonard Lee who got just a little bit high into the cushion. Mike Sweeney with a comfortable lead over those two cars fighting for second spot. And with a prime position is Walt Kennedy. He moves into the number two spot, and Mike Sweeney wins it. Nothing left now but the main event. All the qualifying is over, all of the heat race action. We have got 20 of the finest California Racing Association sprint cars ready to go around this half-mile dirt oval in quest of a championship here at Ascot Park. One of the features of any California Racing Association program at Ascot Park is the famous four abreast parade lap as the 20 cars participating in the main event get ready to take the checkered flag. When they pair off into twos, we'll find Bob East out of Westminster, California. On the pole outside on the front row will be Mike Sweeney. Dean Thompson inside on the second row. Dwayne Fiduska outside of him. Tony Simon inside third row with Clark Templeman on the outside of the third row. Jimmy Oski will be inside on the fourth row with Gary Howard outside of him. The enthusiastic crowd waving to the drivers. This will be the last chance they have to see them at a slow speed as they'll be up to a racing speed of over 100 miles an hour in just a very few short minutes. The cars now melding back into that two abreast pattern. We see Bob East and Mike Sweeney, the two cars on the front row, bringing them around as the pace car pulls back into the Ascot Park pits. And we're set to go for this main event here on Rolling Thunder in championship sprint car action. And it is Mike Sweeney getting the green flag and pulling about a car length lead going into turn number one. And you see Dean Thompson dropping down to the inside. He's making his move early, aiming for three straight wins in a row here at Ascot for Dean Thompson. Can he do it? He looks as if he has moved into the number two spot, passing Bob East. So it is Mike Sweeney number one. Dean Thompson in the second spot as they back it into turn one and two. And coming up quickly is Tony Simon to take over the number three spot and do battle with Dean Thompson. Thompson trying to get around Mike Sweeney, but Sweeney not having a bit of it. He's trying to hold on, but look at the master of Ascot. Put all of his tricks to work as right there he made the move that put him in front of Mike Sweeney and Dean Thompson. Takes over the lead, just three short laps into this main event feature. The car proudly bearing the big number one, indicating the defending champion of the California Racing Association has taken over the lead. And into the number two spot comes Tony Simon. Simon, quite a story himself. It was back in 1973 in a racing accident in Santa Maria that he lost his right hand, but it has not slowed him down a bit on the racetrack as he drives not only the 600 horsepower Sprinter, but also the tricky midget. Tony Seidman in the number two spot. He is trying to catch Dean Thompson, but once you give Thompson this much lead, 
Unless you get a yellow flag, it's awful tough to catch him. He's got an absolutely clear field ahead of him. He does not have any traffic to run through. All he's got to do is dodge the ditches and the bumps here on the dirt surface at Ascot. Tony Simon followed by Mike Sweeney and Jimmy Oski coming up from the back of the pack is moving into the number four spot. Oski in the bright blue car won the trophy dash in such convincing fashion displaying an outstanding driving style. And he's got a tough one coming up on his tail right now as Buster Bernard of Tustin, California moves in in hot pursuit of Jimmy Oski. Bernard, a rookie of the year back in 1976, a big crowd favorite here at Ascot. We asked him, does luck play a big role in racing? There's a, there's a lot of luck involved. You, you, you have to definitely have to have the talent, that's for sure. But you have to have the luck, too. I mean, you go through streaks when you haven't got luck with you. And no matter what you try to do or how hard you try, it seems it just seems like everything goes wrong. And you just you have to take with the bad luck with the good luck. That's all. You have to think back to all the good luck you had. And when you have when you're in a bad luck for a while, it's just you, you have to keep fighting through it. Buster Bernard using a combination, I guess, of luck and great driving skill, just moves past Jimmy Oski with ease. Dean Thompson still in the lead, but there's no race for Dean at the moment. He's out there driving all by himself, as is Buster Bernard, the front wheel dancing off the dirt. Bernard just now getting into midget racing in addition to his sprint car chores and charging up from the back of the pack, the bright blue and gold machine of Bubby Jones. He's moving on the high side and coming up to try to pass Mike Sweeney in the red car. Sweeney running in fifth, Jones trying to move up. He has passed Sweeney and coming up, aiming for the number four spot. Now held by Gary Howard, he's in the white 94. The number two car of Bobby Jones running number five with Dean Thompson in the first spot. Buster Bernard second, Jimmy Oski third. Gary Howard is fourth and Bobby Jones wants that spot. Sliding around the dirt. It's Gary Howard, and he's not about ready to give it up. You can see him just stretch his lead as he comes out into the back straightaway, going into turn number three. Bobby Jones trying to do it as Dean Thompson on the last lap, aiming for his third straight win here at Ascot Park. The master of Ascot, they call him. Won 16 races here a year ago. That is an all-time record for any driver on this half-mile oval on a leisurely Cruise on this Saturday evening and a nice wave to the crowd. Dean Thompson knows how to please the spectators as he has won his third straight race. And that is an incredible record for a great driver, 31-year-old Dean Thompson out of Carson, California. He'll be moving down into the winner's circle in front of the grandstand and a lot of people still on hand to pay the accolades to Dean Thompson, the winner of the main event at Ascot Park. We'll be back with the Winner's Circle interview in just a moment. Dino, our congratulations to you and an absolute great win. You've got a lock on the Winner's Circle here at Ascot Park. Well, thank you, Dave. Um, I don't know if I have a lock or not, but we've that's our third in a row. And, and uh, you know, tonight we happened to qualify in a, in a position where we were started up in front. And the car, my car was working fairly decent and uh, we were lucky enough to win. I got a question for you. You make it look so easy, just sort of gliding around the racetrack. You throw it sideways going into the turns and power your way out of it, and then you slide around the next one. Is it easy? Is it, is it as easy as it looks, or is it really physically demanding to drive one of these cars? Well, it's quite physically demanding because the car is always wanting to turn left or right on you, and you're always having to do little corrections, which you can't see too much, you know, in the grandstand stuff, but the car wants to to uh, jump around on you quite a bit. And, uh, you, know, you have to, you know, there's a fine edge in there. It's like, I don't care what any kind of race that you're in, there's a fine edge of uh, what you're gonna do good and, and you're gonna be, have total disaster. And uh, so the tension and the, and the, the physical, uh, you know, the things you, that you have to do with physically, you know, to drive the car, why it totally makes it hard. Are you tired when you get through? Yeah, I'm tired. That does it for championship sprint car racing for this week. Be sure to join us next week for more Rolling Thunder. I'm Dave McClellan saying so long for now from Ascot Raceway. Rolling Thunder. Championship sprint car racing from J.C. Agajanian's Ascot Raceway in Gardena, California.